Fawn called my doctor. We recently returned from Milan. Go to emergency room now? Yes, now, the whole family. They mask me, rush me into quarantine, put me on a gurney, roll me down emptied out halls to an examination room packed with equipment. Doctors, nurses, and hospital staff in surgical masks and plastic visors watch me from afar. Protocol, a nurse says. Swabs stuck up each nostril. You'll be out in no time, a doc says. I hope so. I gag as my throat is probed. If you do test positive for coronavirus, they'll have to quarantine your whole family, including the cats and dog. Call me the Corona Angel, the nurse curtsies. She wears mismatched cloth gowns and paper pantaloons, plastic coverings on her feet, rubberized gloves, a shower cap, mask, and face shield. I take a photo, my wife and kid post it. Home, still sick. The doctor says influenza, some type not covered by the previous autumn's shots. He prescribes an inhaler, a Z-pack, liquids and sleep. Each cough hurts, foul tasting brownish gunk from deep in my lungs. I treasure my cool bedroom with its tall ceilings, marble fireplace, heirloom furniture. I play melancholic music. I read, I write. I look up thanatophobia, fear of death or anxiety around death, becoming pathological if it becomes a preoccupation as has been known to happen during times of plague or war slippery wormhole backed by adagios waltzing matilda played real slow once a jolly swagman camped by a billabong you'll come a waltzing matilda with me it turns out i was never officially given the coronavirus test i'm told to call the county department of health as long as you're getting better, just stay at home and try not to expose people. Expose them to what? Both my parents recently died. There was nothing gray about it. It was black and white, and I would say it was mostly black. The jolly swag man didn't feel like mincing steps. He was no waltzing bear. My mother fought cancer until she didn't. My dad reread books he loved, the Russians, of course, and looked out the window, had his martini, rocks, each day at 6 p.m. sharp. My parents, apart for four, over 40 years. I take my son and dog for a drive, playgrounds cordoned with police tape, dog off leash, skittering through an abandoned factory broken ice on the river. My wife's snippish at home. It's never going to be the same, she says, complaint and counterpoint to the sleet snapping at our kitchen window. Winter darkness feeling ominous this close to spring, as if it will never cease. I wonder how things will hold up through whatever it is that's descended upon us. Is our house big enough? Will we pull closer together or drift back apart? Fight or flight? I bang on the window. Squirrels, they look back unmoved. My cats track them from window to window. Wind tosses the backyard evergreens. The doorbell rings and I scamper. A masked postal worker waves from across the street. I pick up my packages from within the stoop's snow-covered milk box. There's a spot in the curbside gravel where snow isn't sticking, the pink embryo of a bird. Sad, yes. Is it sad? Whose is that jumbuck you've got in your tucker bag? I listen to wind 
distant sirens. Bereaved, bereavement, the state of loss versus the acts described by grief. Dantean realms of hospitals and hospice, so caring, so hopeless. Mortuary arrangements and obligatory services, expectations of how one should react or not. Coping ugly was how one pioneer in the field once put it. Death is the mother of beauty, no solace. Reeve, reaving, bereaved. The robbing of a person of something both abstract and tactile, robbed by force. The snows melt fast. People are pulling weeds from the edges of their yards. For Scythia's bloom, daffodils, we're all in this together, reads a sign on a shuttered business. I take my son on a drive around the city, quiet streets, empty sidewalks. Only the local convenience stores stayed open. The emptiness is striking enough to pull my son from his phone. He asks about the age of buildings, why some seem noble while others are left to rot. Did you get a game in before they took the hoops down? He shrugs. We're playing online. I ask if he wants to explore beyond this city. He gives it some thought. Let's take the dog. We'll get lunch. The remnants of the Erie Canal. We parallel the Mohawk River for an hour, get off the throughway at Little Falls, a former mill town, and spot an empty lock where there are info kiosks. Let the dog loose watch a group of young people scale a stone wall, then rappel back down. We grab a drive through lunch, zigzag through town. Something stripped the place of its soul long ago. We feed Barry our cattle dog mix in the back seat, chicken nuggets when they cool. I play classics on the way out. Beatles, Marvin, Coltrane. Milo feeds his playlist into the system as we return east. I try rapping, stop, just stop. He hits pause, stares me down. Sunbeams splay the road before us, our car's shadow lengthening into the gold. The river shimmers to our left. The silence is nice, Dad. Let's do this again, like balm. I could die happy. I talk to friends by phone. We exchange observations about how things are looking from our cozy homescapes. How long would this last? Refuge may be the word this year, from the Latin fugere, to flee. To flee deeper inside? hours unwind. I'm up at five, awakened by the text alerts on my wife's phone. I make lists, lists of the lists. No lines through any of the 14 items. By noon, I could do laundry at least. Wake my teenager up? Will you shut your damn door? I snipe at Fawn on her endless phone calls. Her work, my work. Will you shut my door, damn it, adds my son from his room. Will we emerge from captivity with fresh ideas? Many of us have long awaited times when our money systems would collapse, debts would disappear. Is that what's coming? I'm talking about death more, searching out ways to sharpen my analysis of the darker corners of life to balance my aging body's aches against my wife's optimism, once a Midwestern trait, my son's caustic adolescence, more bird embryos nestled on the asphalt's edge, endless spring, dirty blanket sky, off rhythm. I read the weather app, 
thunderhead icons than cheery sun, blogging tempests. I want to be rained on, soaked, scared sensible. Velvet curtains frame a streetscape that's equal parts 19th century aspiration and 21st century blight. Ruins with opportunities. The Empire of States remains. I feel closer to my nation's arc here. Neighbors barbecue on the street at night, locked down, be damned. They dance on stoops. Weed scent fills the air. It feels rich, lawless. I'm on the stoop, gauging the street. I read notices from acquaintances, intent on outing those not following COVID protocols. They make me uncomfortable. I prefer mixed messages. Is tribalism creeping into all corners of our lives? Is blame a natural need? Someone started setting off fireworks on our street. There's a growing level of crazy evident in people's cries at night, the fights we hear, the sirens. I call a cat to my lap. The dog whines. Someone walks pit bulls in our direction. Should I move the family out of country? Mexico? We went south of the border when Milo was four. He spent days singing plaintive ranchero laments. We went into a dark country church where he saw a carved wooden Jesus painted in blood. What did he do, my son asked. Something was brewing. Forbearance, a word that invokes patience, restraint, tolerance. Now most know it as a banking term tied to foreclosures and the need for some humaneness. Primary elections are being pushed off. Tax day two. The president is threatening people, talking about closing down parts of the postal service. Forbearance as a means of caring, of moving us back to ways in which mortality and bereavement, our need for refuge, can be part of our lives once again. We need new forms of heroism and humility. Bereavement, refuge, forbearance, a waltz. From the German word for rolling, revolving, triple time in a close position, once forbidden, now old style. I grab my wife at the bottom of the stairs and dance her through four turns. We hug tight. Fawn and I married twice, once as an elopement, the second time a more public event a half year later. I think this has been good for us, she says, as we lie in bed listening to our street's noises. I turn on the baby monitor, gentle waves. It's been easier with you, I reply. We drive 75 miles up the north way to where our son first tried pad thai. I know it's a long way, but nothing we've tried since has been as good, Milo says. I think of his grandfather. Nothing was as good for dad as his memories, his experience. I can't wait for them to put the hoops back up, Milo says from the back seat, dog's head in his lap. More time outside, Fawn chides. Less time on your phone and PlayStation. The dog sits up, looks longingly at the passing forest. I'm not sure what I want anymore. I've started to enjoy lockdown. I take a smug satisfaction in our split nation. I'm hoping to find a passage beyond memory. I count blessings. Communal gardens, street fridges filled with free food, a shift in our street soundtrack from hard rap to quiet storm to Motown. The lights on the Corning Tower, our city's tallest structure, have been arranged to spell NY Tough. It was meant for our frontline workers, those dealing with disease, 
Albany takes it as a nod to our ongoing battle to not only survive, but maybe even thrive once more. What do you think a civil war will look like? Milo and his friends are talking. Our neighborhood is black majority with few businesses. The folks at the liquor store down the street stay open. Jerry's Corner Deli, holding down the corner for 40 plus years, mumbles about closing shop. They may own the skies, but we rats down here know our alleys. Black man in a gas mask. Milo and I in the street facing police in riot gear, our shirts soaked in milk best way to clean out tear gas. We watch a city council member pushed away by angry police. I don't care if you live down here, says the cop. Blame the protesters. Fawn and I wait on the stoop for Milo out with his friends. Gas mask man walks by again, lifts his face covering. And so it starts, he says. We speak in code, George Floyd days. It feels like a reckoning. Taking the dog for a walk in a hemlock forest, we hear gunfire in the distance, the rapid fire of target practice. What are shooters practicing for? A flash of white, a bird lands on electric wires, face masks dangled from its beak. More protests. Remove the statuary that advertises white supremacy. Removal stages of grief, remorse, anger, shame, anxiety, insouciance. I grew up in Virginia, learned about the war of northern aggression, studied the English Civil War at a Church of England school traveled through Europe 20 years after World War II, fascinated by the French Revolution and Napoleon, visited Dachau the year it became a museum. I was eight. Pain eventually paralyzes, or it becomes a memory we can hold in our hands. We use what we can to build new nests. We learn about being ignored before we can roll over. It's a toughen up tactic. Silence builds. A teacher claims not to see your raised hand. Job applications get no response. Unanswered emails, calls. Your questions are stupid. You're not good enough. You failed. We learn to cry louder. We cry ourselves to sleep. We reach beyond ourselves. We learn courage. My wife asks why I can't hear her. My kid repeats a question over and over. Our city explodes with anger. We do our best. We can always try to do better. I want to see friends, want to know whether our eyes, our mouths look different. Would we rush? to hug, only to pause and then step back, blushing like teenagers. In our 60s, we see age lines, time passed. We want to step back into earlier selves, losing our scars and fat. The pandemic pushes me past coolness. I cherish my years of yearning, but spent enough time stealing myself to rejection I am tired of rampant cynicism. I welcome the sentimental, whatever is heartfelt. I get a different song caught in my craw, an American version of banjo's waltz, the big rock candy mountain precursor to a pile of American hobo tunes. I'm gonna stay where you sleep all day, where they hung the jerk that invented work on the big rock candy mountain. Two men shoot each other's legs, and other two plug each other in the stomach. A pair of 14-year-olds end up in the ER with bullet wounds following a South End shouting match. An older man gets stabbed in the arm, then shot in the back. 
a 17-year-old dies in a rain of bullets at 3.15 a.m. just down the street from where I live. Guns are easy to get, says Jerome. These kids shoot like in movies. They aim sideways, miss their target. It's a problem for bystanders. A call comes in while we speak. Shots fired at the mall, only open for two days. Everyone fled by bus. How do you afford a gun? You don't need money if your attitude aligns, answers Jerome. None of the safety valves, sports programs, school, the library, church, grandparents, parole officers are available anymore. What happens if this COVID thing lasts more than a year? We rent a camp, take 12 teens. Late that night, they are stuttering tired but can't shut up. I use my dad voice, keep it up and I drive us all home. Is this education's future? Pods of kids from safe, like-minded families? Camp's best as camp, a rare activity one looks forward to for a few summers then remembers for a lifetime, its hard surfaces smoothed by fond recollections of camaraderie and survival. The teen speed talk, Biden versus Trump, is Kanye crazy or just promoting? Dragonflies and flies and mosquitoes and ticks, which were smarter? Who's the bigger threat, us or them, I hear my son ask. A wasp-like creature explores a bark-stripped porch rail in early morning light, feeling every contour without touching. It flies an inch above the wood surface, disappears into a hole, then reemerges, skitters outside the hole, re-enters. I'm not interested in the science. I read in it a short story, a fable. So many narratives now, facts, alternate facts, fiction. I watch my dog watch. She stares at the hole in the porch rail that the flying creature went into, then turns towards the water's edge. Something was rustling in the underbrush. We need a narrative of narratives. Richard talks about the cult of death and its return. We've been hit with pandemic. It's still spreading, he says. Even when we close this chapter with a vaccine or herd immunity, there will be more. It's all a weird new take on that darkness explored throughout Central Europe in the first half of the last century, he said. It's like the darkness that preceded the Renaissance. That darkness has entered his drawings. I reopen Michael Lisi's Wisconsin death trip, explore Posada prints, Fuentes fiction, and Mexico's Day of the Dead traditions. Recall all I can of time spent in India and what I learned there about locks and crores, big amounts related to the number of deities, the various levels and sorts of interpretation for any event or thing the ways light and dark, fact and fiction, good and bad coexist. Why bring up such darkness, I ask Richard. To pass through it, he replies. We don't always need to add to the hurt. The word su world supplies enough. We speak about readying our arms to finally embrace mortality. We agree to replay Leonard Cohen's Take This Waltz, where there's a shoulder where death comes to cry. There's a tree where the doves go to die. Where is our laughter? What's funny now? We rewash our masks in the sink, buy a pack of new ones every few weeks, wash hands each hour. Hand sanitizer is everywhere. I never got tested. I figure that time will come. Did I get this disease earlier in the winter? Do I have antibodies? 
part of me wants to yell at my phone, at the television, just accept things have changed. Death walks among us. We fucked it all up, but we can still enjoy life. We are swag men, our memories Matildas, waltzing to keep the big rock candy mountain in view. A woman's voice rises from the street. COVID motherfucker loser, lousy ass bitch. Mumblings, then a slammed car door. Another wonderful day in the neighborhood, sings our boy. We all laugh warmly. The dog and I get in the car. I need that driving form of thinking where the front brain keeps me from crashing while the rest of me rummages. No notes, music in a blurry landscape revealing possible signs for the future. I've entered the final section of my life. Parents gone, bereaved, grieved other losses, awaiting bigger change. Three seasons bled together, a dancing bear in the bathroom mirror. The dog sits up as we move from cityscapes into forest, fallow fields. She reaches out her paw to touch me, wants a belly rub as we drive, then a stop to run. We've driven these roads in snow, floods, drought, now play. Leaves are darkening, a whisper of fall. I try to get lost, but keep recognizing landmarks as we reach higher ground. I spot a pull-off, a rushing creek, no other cars. The dog makes a plaintive sound, refuge. COVID was us these months in 2020, but I still believe we are more. Refuge indeed. From bereavement, forbearance, come a waltzing, a waltzing with me.